Welcome to Terra Talks, where we talk about all things real estate. In each episode, we'll tackle current trends and topics of interest, both locally and regionally. However, or wherever you decide to tune in, you're not going to want to miss this. Hi, I'm Emma Hudson and I'm at Terra Caribbean on the South Coast mainly. And I'm with my colleague Betty Cathro today and we're here to talk about the market in review. We're going to be analysing between 2019 through to 2021, which obviously includes the COVID pandemic, the welcome stamp and a lot of exciting stuff. We're really excited to share this information with you. Uh, we tend to get together every quarter and look at the statistics um, that we capture at Terra. And it's one of the things that I really enjoy about working here because as an agent, we have a gut feel of how the market is performing. But then when you look at the numbers, you can actually get a feel as to definitely what's going on. And there's a lot of exciting stuff going on. You would have thought that you know, 2019, the numbers, which were pre-COVID, um, maybe would have performed better than where we're at now, 2021. Um, but we're going to share with you that actually there's a lot of very positive trends in the market right now. And the market is definitely strengthening. Um, we could start out with sales. Yeah, let's and, kick it off um, with sales. Yeah, one of the things that we, we look at some key statistics. Uh, one is the number of transactions that we do on an annual basis. So that's how many sales have we actually made in, in the year. Um, and when we looked at the transactions for 2021, we actually closed out 46% um, more sales than in 2020 and 27% more than 2019's pre-COVID performance. So that's really very, very impressive. Um, sales revenue would have strengthened as well as a result of this. Um, that increased by 14% in 2020 and a further 2% in 2021. Um, and then the other thing that I find is cool is when we look at lead indicators. Yeah. Um, so we look at lead volume. So how many, how many uh, clients are calling in and requesting information on sales? How many new clients are we recording on a monthly basis and on an annual basis? Which is like a local and international market as well. Yes, yeah. exactly. Um, and we found that new inquiries from those interested in purchasing property in Barbados was up 32% in 2021 from 2020 slightly deflated numbers. So that's really impressive. Um, another thing that we look at is depending sales. Ends. Yeah, so obviously pending sales measures the value of sales agreed and that are also waiting to be closed. Um, so we increased by a massive 74% at the start of 2020 pre-COVID. And we are pleased to say that 2022 for Q1, uh, which actually Betty and I are now analysing, um, has actually started off 49% ahead of um, last year, which signals a serious impressive year yeah. ahead. And um, yeah. I think everybody right now at Terra, we're now a team of 18 agents and we're really, really excited for the year ahead. Yeah, and I would say that every eight, all 18 of us are also really, really busy. I mean, I, I would have to say I've never been this busy yeah. before. Uh, so I think that this first quarter of 2022 is going to show some very interesting statistics as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, something that we don't really track um, internally to Terra, but is interesting to note as well, is that uh, short-stay visitors have obviously returned to the island. Yeah. And what I keep hearing from hotels and hoteliers and actually our villa side of the business yeah. as well, short term, is that their occupancy is higher than it has been in the past, yeah. more consistently. So where we would normally have a winter peak season and maybe things would drop off a little bit in January, February, the island really has been really busy yeah, hasn't it's been it super busy um and just i mean even just by our like our volume of transactions for both long-term rentals and for sales um we've just seen a massive increase um, in interest and and obviously um properties closing and properties being rented um i think really you probably agree with me on this one and looking at the stats um christchurch st james and st peter are the predominant ones that people tend to focus on yeah. obviously it's walking distance to the beach it's super close to amenities um, you've got every access to public transport and those kind of things, especially if you are on holiday. 
Um, so that is something just to take note of, I guess, if you are looking for a rental investment or a holiday investment for yourself or for family members. Yeah, what and one of the trends that we typically see is that in St. James and St. Peter, that tends to be a overseas buyer, yeah. whereas Christchurch is more of a local buyer. Yeah. Um, mind you, obviously, with the welcome stamp and the popularity of the South Coast, we have seen a bit of a shift in that. But it's just nice to think that both markets are strengthening. It's not just foreign yeah. demand, it's local demand as well, you know. For sure. And um, I think the welcome stamp saved everybody's bacon. <laughs> oh my gosh, the welcome stamp was such yeah. an incredible initiative, really. But I think it also just put, and I think this is why we've started to see a massive increase just for our sales as well transactions for 2021 and um, 2022 now going forward, is the fact that the welcome stamp sort of put Barbados back on the map. It really um, did, yeah. It sort of brought those new generations in that were looking to buy. And then with the welcome stamp, it really encouraged like digital nomads to come in. I mean, I've never seen so many one beds rented. Ever. Yeah, um, and um, one bed rental rates have actually even gone up by almost twenty two percent, which is wild. Um, and then we also saw then larger family homes being rented, which really shot up our numbers. It was like twenty twenty and the COVID pandemic. Um, suddenly, yeah, villa rentals have up to sort of like sixty thousand Barbados dollars. I know. I'd only ever done ten thousand. <laughs> <laughs> so what? it was. Um, yeah. What I what I found really interesting as well is that we all of a sudden were dealing with people that had never been to Barbados yeah. before. So traditionally, as a real estate agent, we'd be dealing with people that know the island. You know, they've educated themselves. They've been coming here for years. And now all of a sudden they want to make Barbados home. Yeah. Or, um, you know, perhaps they've come and done some reconnaissance and they're going to be moving here with their families. Yeah. Um, but we dealt with a lot of people who had never been to Barbados before. Yeah. Never. I yeah. mean, isn't that amazing? Literally pack a suitcase <laughs> and just arrive. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think mean, some of them have turned into to purchasers, which yeah, is great. Which is awesome. Um, or they're spreading the news about how wonderful their stay has been. And this is it, just in terms of like a referral network. Obviously, we prospect a lot. We prospect daily. Mm -hmm. um, but the referral networks have come from that. And I think we've all seen that in terms of you've dealt with suddenly one person that might have come through the website at the start of the COVID pandemic where the welcome stamp was just sort of being initiated and now it's suddenly like well actually yeah so and so that rented Palisades or Palm Beach or Schooner Bay recommended that I work with you and that you could find me something yeah. and by the way I'm bringing my dog and my children yeah. and, you know which and then obviously we've got the welcome stamp um booklet that we sort of um marketing thank you very nicely put together um and yeah just sort of sending that out really sort helped but I mean the amount of furnished rentals we're suddenly finding is yeah it's, it's crazy but suddenly yeah it was up in, it was up above 90 percent of our uh, rentals yeah for the year and that's because of the welcome stampers really yeah you know, they they're not moving with any furniture they're moving yeah. with a dog a lot of yeah. <laughs> or a cat <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> we definitely saw a surge in that that's something that um, I think landlords need to be aware of there's a yeah. real shift towards people even who are coming here for three months bringing their pets with them they yeah. can't be without the pets no you know? of course not yeah yeah so um yeah it's an interesting time definitely to be in the uh the real estate market that's for sure um i'm interested to see how sort of 2022 comes about just since sort of like the world's reopened um you know covid restrictions elsewhere have sort of lessened um i'll be interested to see how the welcome stamp goes forward from there um but we are definitely starting to some welcome stamp is still come back anyway. Yeah, what I found interesting as well is that because of COVID, even people that aren't welcome stampers realize that they can work online. Yeah. And it's now acceptable to work online. So we're traditionally we might have had people that were retired coming to buy properties here. Yeah. I'm finding now we get a lot of like younger couples oh, that yeah. they think, well, gosh, I can live in Barbados during the cold months. I can live in Portugal another few months I don't need to be tied to any one place which I think is so cool exactly <laughs> I, mean, I mean it really is and that's it I mean if you're going to buy I mean we saw saw like a huge volume of, sort of apartments being bought as well mm -hmm. and if say yeah a young couple in their 30s decides to buy a condo they can come live in it for certain months of the year when they want to mm -hmm. and then either call us to rent it out for the rest of it or leave it and back when they're ready yeah. I'm a property manager it is cool it suddenly became really quite simple to own a property um 
and yeah, just I mean, this last Christmas season was hectic, and our and our sort of season. So normally the winter season, which is our popular season, is from December to April, and it's showing no signs of slowing down. No, for sure. So, um, so back back to the sales side. Um, one of the other things, well, we do it on both sides. We actually measure the average rental rate by bedroom type. Yeah. Um, and we me- measure the average um, sales price for all of the properties that we've sold. We measure the minimum and the maximum as well. Um, and one of the trends that we definitely saw as, as COVID um, hit Barbados was that many of the vendors then kind of reassess their pricing. Yeah. And um, they brought it more in line with the market. And I think yeah. that that fueled the transactions because yeah, agreed. we saw properties that have been on the market, honestly, for in some cases, eight years. Yeah. Uh, just sitting there and all of a sudden they're disappearing. But it, it, it's definitely um, the formula of a price coming down in line with market and yeah. people seeing it's it's good value. Yeah, you agreed. Know? I mean, I don't think, I mean, I've been at Terra now for eight years. I never sold a property over ask. And this year, actually, we did a deal together. Oh, yes. Pilgrim, <laughs> and it was 4.9% over ask. Yeah. You know, didn't think that was going to be happening. I know. It's it's a bit like a, it's a crazy world at the moment, isn't yeah. it? Because just because somebody puts in a full price offer doesn't mean they're necessarily going to get their no. property in the end. We're suddenly seeing multiple offers on properties where before, if you got one in six months, that was great. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. I've been yeah. I've been saying that to a lot of people that it's, you know, though we're getting a lot of offers, there's no guarantee that yeah. you're getting to the finish line because yeah. there's so much going on. Um, very interesting times. Yeah. You know? And even from like a commercial standpoint, um, I mean, commercial obviously took a massive dip at yeah. the start when COVID hit. Um, everybody sort of tightened their belts. People really reassessed where they wanted to be. But I think 2021 sort of reignited the flame for commercial sales and rentals. Um got a massive one um in Wildy that sold and that's now soon to be rented out for commercial that's going to be like a new rental hub yeah um, haven yeah so yeah. it really should be cool and then I've started to suddenly get an interest again in commercial rentals more for sort of like retail and then other companies sort of reassessing their office space yes and what you found yeah I found the same thing I mean in some cases it's people shifting from larger spaces to smaller spaces because they're you know working in a hybrid system where some people are working online coming in a few days and that sort of thing yeah um but it's still nice to see uh the activity yeah you know resurging Resurging. definitely in the main business districts as we would expect yeah um and uh but there there are some commercial spaces that have been vacant for quite some time and i think you know the landlords have to look but um, how best to reassess yeah, yeah. and reposition and, and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, if we go back to the achieved sales prices yeah. and we look at, um, we found that our average, sorry, the lowest sales price was in 2021 in terms of the minimum sale price over the, the period. Um, but inter- interestingly, the maximum sales price was also 16.7 million was in 2021. Yeah. And another thing that is of note, which we actually have not captured in this information, is that there were two flagship properties sold yeah. um, last year, and they were both above um, 35 million yes. US dollars, yeah. right? So that's really impressive. I yeah. mean, these are people that could buy a property anywhere in the world. They're well-traveled, yeah. and they're choosing our shores to invest and to yeah. make home. I mean, I, I find that such a huge compliment. Massively. Don't you? Massively. <laughs> it's just like, wow. <laughs> but I mean, even if you just look at the activity of, uh, in Barbados over the last few years in terms of what's open, little hop, you know, hubs like Sea Shed, my heart. Yes, I do uh, love Sea Shed. Everybody loves Sea Shed. <laughs> Lacaban is opening a second venue. Um, there's different, you know, little spots that have opened. And I think it's just, yeah, really ignited the sort of social scene of Barbados. Obviously, yes, with COVID, it did take a bit of a toll. But I think, it, yeah, now with the Christmas season, you suddenly had to book somewhere. We didn't have to do that for a little while because of COVID. Oh, I know. And suddenly you couldn't get a booking. Um, you know, the beach house is open with Paul Owens. QP has now been t- opened. And, um, yeah, I think with those sort of, with the level of client like that, buying sort of like a flagship property, we need to up our game in those stakes as well. Yeah. 
And I'm impressed with how Barbadians have performed during COVID, to be honest with you, because I find people have become really entrepreneurial and um, creative. Yeah. You know, you go to markets now and you're getting really quality jewelry or creativity. Yeah. I mean, people are coming up with all sorts of things. And then, like you said, in terms of activities, yeah. it's not just the same old, you know, now there's bonfires. And, yeah. Um, just, I, I mean, even as a Bajan, I think it's great because yeah. there's some new stuff to do, you know, yeah. breathing some new, some new no, activities. Cool. And in a way, I think COVID has also made people reassess what matters and... Yeah. Barbados is known for its people. Yeah. Whenever I ask my clients why Barbados, they often say it's because of the people. Yeah. It's not the beaches and all of that. There are many places in the world that have that, but so often they say they feel comfortable, safe, we have and a the, community. the people are so lovely, yeah. you know? <laughs> in terms of, like, discounts, because everybody always wants a bargain. Mm -hmm. uh, we all love a deal. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think when COVID sort of hit, people really thought that they could sort of lowball offers um, and we actually had to turn around and go, you can't do that. Because I think, like you said earlier, the market pricing became more in line with what was it the true value for this time. Um, and then suddenly, you know, our year on year with 2019, the maximum discount obviously was at 43.4%. Um, but the averages went from 6.5%. And now the average discounts at 73 well, if we look at our average discount in 2019, which was obviously pre-COVID, uh, it was 6.5%. Um, and then in 2021, it was 7.3%. Yeah. Um, but, you know, on the flip side, as you were saying, we've, we've had many um, offers over ask, yeah. which is really quite impressive. Um, one of the things that we found in 2019 is anything that sold over ask was typically a distressed local property. Right. Whereas now we're actually finding that it's not a distressed property. Yeah. It's a property that's targeting the foreign market. Yeah. And um, there's just so much demand that we're getting that, you know, over ask situation. So it's quite a shift in how things sure. are being being dealt with. Yeah, I find like the really sought after hubs right now are sort of whole town area with the Sunset Crest, obviously Sandy Lane. Sandy Lane has suddenly reignited its flame as well. Yeah, we've seen a lot of activity in Sandy Lane in that Huge, first quarter. Insane. Really noticeable, <laughs> it's yeah. Wild. yeah. Um, and then obviously even up to Spice Town because we, Spice Town has had such a rejuvenation and a bit of a facelift. I mean, you've got now Outpost 111, um, the local, there's um, Little Bristol, there's a bit of a hub going on there. And then, like, you know, when Queen Street was built, and that sold out in two seconds, and they do really w well for long term rentals. And then even on the south coast with like Hastings and Worthing and then Atlantic Shores for the surfers. Yes. I find that those hubs, I can't find anything at the minute. It's yeah, I was actually just about to say the same thing that we're seeing as you, I mean, as you can hear from what we said, you know, we've got transactions up, um, you know, the leads coming in are more than we've seen in the past. Uh, we're seeing properties selling over ask and all of those things indicate a real strengthening of the market. Yeah. Plus, now what Emma said, we're finding that supply is starting to yeah. decline, you know, <laughs> which insane. makes it hard as an agent, yeah. doesn't it? I mean, we're, you know, you're really trying to turn over every rock to see yeah. what you can find to suit your clients. It's crazy. Um, another thing I've had recently, which, to be honest with you, I find very frustrating, but a compliment to Barbados as well, is that um, we have properties for sale, beautiful properties for sale, owners haven't been to Barbados in two yeah. years because of COVID and all of a sudden you know they come back and they've fallen back in love with Barbados yeah. and they say you know what we don't want to sell, sell anymore, anymore. <laughs> and it's like oh okay that's great <laughs> I'm glad you love it but we now need yeah. to find something else yeah yeah, yeah yeah but even same for like long-term rentals I think since um the Barbados market has sort of reopened um uh, for tourism and for short-term rentals especially mm -hmm. of this last winter season yeah. Long-term rentals are really now hard to find. Yep. And you have clients with really good budgets from like 5,000 US up to 25,000 US. And can I find anything? No. Yeah, no, it's true. Because during COVID, a lot of the short-term rental properties would have shifted into that medium 
slash long term because obviously they had no one coming. Yeah. Um, but now they see the opportunity and they've shifted back. Yeah. And it's not ideal, is it? No. Trying to find something <laughs> for a client. I'm now starting to see a few more come back on, I think, since the winter season has slowed. Yes. Um, for sort of short term rentals, um, not for sales, as we were mentioning earlier. Mm-hmm. But I have found that some properties are now sort of coming back onto the long term rental market um, or the mid term rental market. I know that's sort of become an area that we weren't really ever used to and suddenly we were dealing with sort of two to five month leases whereas before it was 12 months if you had a nine month that was quite short yes and now it's like two to five is the norm no it's true and then uh, the video I mean we have to do video of everything now because so many people are looking at videos before they even go and see property some people are renting before they even come to Barbados yeah yeah and and really change the way that we do business yeah and even with sales I mean I had a client trying to make an offer just from seeing a a video I was like please could you just have somebody come and look on, yes. on your behalf yeah. um I had a sale I had a sale last year that, and it was just a video sale yeah but we did have uh, someone come in and do an assessment yeah. for them which made me feel a lot more comfortable <laughs> for sure um but I can't remember who it was on our team that I was talking to but they said you know when when that happens you walk around with your video on and you're looking at every nook and cranny yeah. you want to make sure that you're showing them yeah. every single thing you know it's it's a different world world for sure yeah but I'm um, enjoying it I mean I yeah I was slightly worried when COVID hit and wasn't sure how you know Barbados would be but yeah we are really really lucky I know we really are and I think uh, there's a lot to be said for the way that Barbados has handled yeah. the pandemic. And, um, you know, as I think you said earlier, we've been put back on the world map. Yeah. Like people really do admire how we've dealt with it. Yeah. And the welcome stamp was such a great initiative for the island. It really helped us through yeah. a very, very tough time and has now exposed us to a whole new set of people, yeah. which is fabulous. It's, yeah, it's just nice to see, sort of like, young couples come back, young families, um, young single people even like kids like teenagers and you're going yeah actually I do want to go out with mum and dad to have a trip um I've got a really like client that's become a friend here and his daughter and son are constantly trying to come out before yeah. it was now it's, you know, <laughs> it's not cool and now it's the place to be um so yeah I'm really pumped to see what 2222 brings yeah me too so I have clients friends always approach me and just say I don't know if my property is like suitable for me to become a landlord um you know I've just got a one bedroom in Sunset Crest my answer to you is yes it is definitely (laughs) suitable (laughs) um our highest supply right now well highest demand is for three bedrooms and it has been since 2019 it allows families to be together or to have a home office um, and that's quite closely followed by sort of two bedrooms and then because we have seen such a surge in digital nomads coming to Barbados with the welcome stamp our one bedroom um demand has gone through the roof it's been crazy um and with four bedrooms becoming increasingly popular too um yeah it's an interesting time to become a landlord um so my answer to you is yes you can definitely become a landlord (laughs) um but we have got a sort of luxury segment of the market um and we have then seen a really increase in five and six bedrooms as well yeah one of the issues that we have in the five and six bedroom section is that there's a lack of supply yeah you know <laughs> <laughs> trying to find yeah I had um, somebody looking for a six bedroom in Sandy Lane couldn't find anything and then um, suddenly we approached one client that was on the short-term rental market and he said actually yeah I will take on this and um, they were super happy and they they loved it and they ended up staying for nine months um, oh, nice <laughs> so yeah I found that sort of somebody rented um, a property actually with us in uh, Royal Westmoreland and it was a three-month rental and then I got a call saying hey we're going to extend going to extend again so um we are still just seeing that luxury sector really come into play in Barbados which is an exciting time because we've definitely never seen that before um but in terms of sales like what are people looking for are they looking for apartments they're looking for houses what are they after um well definitely with COVID as would be expected we saw a shift towards um villas standalone uh homes so we in uh, 2019 we sold 33 sorry, 33% of the market sales was homes, while in 2021, it went up to 40%. Wow. Yeah, so we've seen a big shift there, I think. Um, And then the, we would have seen a decline in the number of land sales, 
yeah. which I think would be expected because, you know, that's mostly the local market. Yeah. And um, they would have been impacted quite uh, substantially by COVID. Also, construction costs have gone up. Yeah. Um, but we saw that resurge this year. Uh, well, sorry, in 2021, but really for central locations, Christchurch being the, you know, the hot spot. So we had yeah. places like the Grove where we hadn't necessarily yeah. had sales in a while. All of a sudden we had lots of sales. Southview as well. Um, You've only got one lot left in Southview now. No, I know. <laughs> it's, it's great, you know. Um, so it's nice to see. Sorry, too. <laughs> it's nice to see our locals investing in the rock again. It really is. Um, and then obviously we've got apartments and townhouses. We don't seem to have as many townhouses really on the island. I think no. people do like townhouses. Yeah. Um, but, you know, they're a smaller part of our market simply because of supply. Yeah, I think um, so. And I, that sort of is in line as well with sort of rentals in terms of what's been renting. Um, in 2019, I think we had our biggest supply of apartments rented. It was 15% by, t- um, by property type. Um, so we had 50% of apartments rented. Uh, that actually dropped to 45% in 2020, where we saw just a massive increase with people wanting houses. Um, and we did see a sort of slight increase in townhouses too. I think people just wanted space. Yeah, wanted exactly, private space, space. Especially with the COVID restrictions that were worldwide and in Barbados. Everybody just wanted their own little sort of sanctuary. Um, so yeah, I'm interested to see how the market changes now for 2022. As sort of restrictions are open, people can either enjoy yeah. Barbados. One of the things that really blew me away when we looked at our statistics is the fact that uh, 2021 was the, sorry, in 2021, Terra recorded the highest sales revenue in its firm's history. That's amazing. I mean, that is really incredible. Yeah. It's um, something to be really, really proud of. Yeah. Um, yeah. Super fortunate. <laughs> and um, yeah. 2022 is set to be even a better year yeah which just blows my mind (laughs) yeah and you guys i mean everybody can look forward to our uh, next report which will be coming out very soon soon. (laughs) we're working busily on it uh, which looks at the q1 numbers for 2022 so we look forward to sharing those with you yeah there's um i was reading through some of those last night actually when we were going back and forth and um yeah some really really interesting figures so please watch out for that yeah as we were saying earlier, uh, we had a situation where there was uh, low demand and high supply, and yeah. the market has definitely shifted now where it's high demand and lower supply. So watch yeah. this space. Yeah. And thank you for listening. Yeah, thanks, thanks for joining so much. us. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to Terra Talks, where we talk about all things real estate. In each episode, we'll tackle current trends and topics of interest, both locally and regionally. However, or wherever you decide to tune in, you're not going to want to miss this.